Quick Slant is presented by your local New England Honda dealers. Around here, we Honda. What's up, everybody? How you doing? How was your bye week, huh? I was just noticing everything's snug. I got to lose a couple pounds. I overate. I had mac and cheese. I had steak. I had French onion soup. It just it gets to you. So welcome in. Uh, we're going to have a highly energetic program as the Patriots prepare for the Indianapolis Colts. We'll, of course, have Megan Ottolini alongside, but I, I'm disturbed at how snug this is. Um, here's the game plan, folks. It's brought to you by Shaw's. Perfecting the art of fresh. That's what Shaw's is doing. Um, separated at birth? I'll get to that. Uh, Kyle Van Noy will bring us up to date on what he knows about Saturday's opponent, the Indianapolis Colts. We get a poll, we get viewer comments. As usual, we also have the mega hot take, but first, it's time for my slant. The rivalry is back on. <laughs> <laughs> That was bold. We spoke back in early 2018. The Indianapolis Colts coming off a 4 and 12 season. Josh McDaniels left them at the altar. They went and they found themselves a Frank Reich. And what's gone on? Well, they went 7 and 9 in 2019. But then they bumped up to an 11 and 5 record last year with Philip Rivers a quarterback. Now, as Carson Wentz, somewhat revitalized. You know who the Colts look like? The Patriots. Yeah, the Patriots started 2 and 4 this year. Indy started 0 and 3. The Colts have won four of five and five out of seven. The Patriots have won seven straight. Both teams have beaten an array of bad teams. Both have had narrow losses to good teams. Both run the hell out of it. Both turn it over on defense a lot. Here's what Trent Brown had to say about the Colts on Tuesday. Their record doesn't speak for their uh, for the way they play. Um, if you look at them, if you turn them on whenever they're playing, you think they're an undefeated football team. Now, they aren't identical. They do things differently. And I mean, God bless uh, our guy Bobby Okariki for divulging the game plan for Sunday. Bobby, hit it. But, you know, we're really going to try to make the game one dimensional and see what he can do. Okay, he's talking about uh, uh, McCorkle Jones there. But in a wide open AFC, I'm looking at a team that resembles the Patriots as much as the Colts do. And I kind of like the fact that the Patriots are going to see a mirror image because while the rivalry might not be on, Megan Ottolini, this qualifies for me. There, yes, the AFC is wide open to start there. There are similarities between these teams. I just think when you bring up the rivalry, the thing that people think about with the Colts Patriots is they think about the Manning Brady yeah. showdown. How many Lombardi? Back in the day, the, the great battles. This is going to be a horse of a different color yes. to play off of the Colts. Okay, both of these teams have found so much success through their running games with the running backs. If you look at Jonathan Taylor, he's had he's rushed for over 100 yards in seven mm -hmm. games this season. Now, the Patriots, I have to point out, their rushing defense was a little bit suspect Sus against the Titans. A little Sus bit, you suspect. So, I have to ask you, if we are talking about this new chapter of the rivalry, how much respect and fear should we give to Indianapolis? <sighs> Respect should be higher than I think it's being doled out at this point. The reason for that is they're built similarly to the Patriots. There are more dents, there are more blemishes, there are more pockmarks on their roster than the Patriots have right now. Patriots, I think, soup to nuts are the most complete team in the AFC, and that includes Kansas City. But I think the toughness factor that the Patriots exhibited against Buffalo is going to be there this week. Now, the Patriots certainly, as you pointed out, they let up a ton of yards not in the not-too-distant past on the ground, and they're going to have to bow up against the best running back in the NFL this year, Jonathan Taylor. But to me, the Patriots can beat you in multiple ways. I'm wondering if Carson Wentz and the Indianapolis Colts can do the same thing. But again, what I'm kind of fascinated in is the chaos that is the AFC right now and how compressed all these teams are. Yeah, they're all very close, and I would love after we get to the comments to talk about who might be the actual real rivals mm -hmm. for the Patriots right now, because I Frauds. have some thoughts on that. Frauds are for I have reals. some thoughts on that, but let's hear from the people. Time now for From the Stands, and Tom, your poll results are brought to you by your New England Ford dealers and Ford Trucks, official truck of the NFL. Yeah, parity reigns in the AFC. 13 of 16 teams, excuse me, yeah, have six wins or more. And how do you guys feel about this? There's three teams that are with the Patriots, uh, Patriots, Chiefs, Titans all tied at the top. Um, 
chaos. I love it. 84% of you. I miss really good teams. And by really good teams, what I mean, Meg, are the Godzillas, the King Kongs, the Gamoras, the Titans who terrorize the rest of the conference. We really don't have one of those. Right. We're talking about historic teams, teams that you point back on you know five Gamera years is? from now, ten years from now. You don't Sorry. know who Gamera is. Gamera? No. Is that like Rodan? from a video game? That's like okay. 1970. All right. Kind Jeff of. says, love it. Any playoff team has a real chance at winning the Super Bowl this season, so why not the Pats? You could easily see a two seed go home in wild card weekend and a wild card make the Super Bowl this season. Jake says, I think all of us are still trying to pretend that the Chiefs haven't been the same dominant Chiefs for the last month plus. I don't know, Jake. I got something on that. Pats fan Kev says, love it. This is when coaching takes over in Bill and Kyle Van Noy, we trust. We got a guy there in Pats fan Kev who is very, very savvy about getting his comment on TV because he knows we'll have Van Noy coming in and he wants to make sure that we highlight and tease ahead. So good job by you, Pats fan Kev. <sighs> I think what's interesting about this, when we look at the whole landscape, and, and what was the second guy's question? He, said, he oh, brought the up Kansas the, City Chiefs. Chiefs, the okay. Chiefs. Phil did a great job pointing this out on our podcast today. The only pummelings that the Chiefs are handing out are to the Raiders. When you look offensively at what they've done throughout the last month and a half, it's a collection of games in which they've barely broken 20 points. So to me, yeah, the Chiefs are a team that you have to fear more than the Patriots. But when you have the Chiefs and the Ravens and the Bills and the Patriots and the Colts, there is nothing to me that suggests, Meg, that the Patriots should not be considered in the same grouping with them. And again, as the most complete team, because they can do whatever you want. You want to run it? They can run it. You want to throw it? They can throw it. Do they have a quarterback who completely subscribes to the first do no harm tenets? Yeah. Does Patrick Mahomes live that way this year? No. Does Has Lamar ever... Jackson? No. So that to me is why the Patriots are the odds on favor. We'll see what's going on. But getting back to your first point about the rivalry. Sure. Now, I think we are back to this. Patriots tradition that Bill Belichick has built where everyone thinks they're your rival. You go up to yep. Buffalo, the Bills say, this is the same Patriots who've been knocking us on our butts for decades now. It's the same old Patriots, and we got them this time. Well, they didn't. I think when you go down to Maryland, there's the whole Maryland of it 100%. all against the Baltimore Ravens and Bill Belichick. Everybody has a reason, whether it's because they hated Tom Brady or as uh, somebody said on Twitter today, connected to one of the Indianapolis papers saying that, OK, Bill Belichick is still smug. McDaniels right. is a twerp. Everybody has a reason to think that oh, the yeah. Patriots are their rival. The Patriots have rebooted the agitation over and over and over again for so many different fan bases. What's interesting to me is this Colts game is going to be one of the first ones that they confront when there's going to be no excuse for the team that the Patriots are playing, whether it was Cleveland or Tennessee or Atlanta. All of those teams had a reason to say, yeah, but we weren't ourselves. The Colts don't have that. All right, Kyle Van Noy is coming up after the break, and we're going to talk to him about the explosive Jonathan Taylor and his 16 rushing touchdowns. Don't you move. Gross potential. Brought to you by Dr. Lepresti and Leonard Hair Transplant Associates. Top scoring defenses in the NFL. If you want to prevent hair loss, talk to Leonard Hair Associates and Dr. Lepresti. Speaking of preventing... Patriots have just allowed 15.4 points per game this season. The Bills, they used to be hanging out at number two. They're all the way down at number three. Look at the Broncos. They're not going to the playoffs, but they have a defense to brag on. Cardinals, exposed. Seahawks, not that good. So the Patriots, they're doing business. All right, look, it's 2021. There are times when technical difficulties crop up, and we're expecting our guy Kyle Van Noy, KVN03, Patriots linebacker. He hasn't popped in yet. He might be on the way, but before we unveil him, I want to talk to you, Meg, about the fact that there was a lot of scoreboard watching that went on this weekend. And when we look at the Bucks and the Bills game, anything about that game surprise you? Do you think that Sean McDermott continued to have the Patriots in his head by not running it once in the first half? We call it the reverse Belichick because he <laughs> saw Belichick making a statement with his coaching and he said, well, I got Josh Allen. I got the quarterback with the biggest arm maybe in the league right now, so watch me work. It didn't, it didn't work. It didn't, it didn't work, John. I'm sorry. I understand, I understand the response. I understand that there's a little bit of rent-free living in his head, but the reverse Belichick is not a move that should be attempted mm -hmm. under um, circumstances against Tom Brady. It was a tremendous game to watch. I ingested the entire thing, and I'm wondering, you're out of here now because our guy finally banged in. Kyle, 
This is my guy. We What's happening? Thank you, you for kicking her out for a sec. Oh, she'll be back. <laughs> She's going to take over for me in no time, so it'll be you and her. But were you scoreboard yeah. watching it all on Sunday, watching the games as a fan or as a – yeah, I know. I know. And Just a little bit. No, it, it's always good to see friends play around the league. Uh, when I'm not play, I usually – I uh, have it on as background chasing little man around, but it's, it was awesome to see Tom and Gronk play good as well as the rest of my friends, Fred Warner for the uh, Niners playing well. They got a big win in Cincy. So it's fun to see everybody play that I'm close with in the league. When you look at what the bills have done, have you gotten into scoreboard watching around the league? I started off the show talking about how wide open the AFC is. And while you might have gotten a little separation, but go ahead. I can see you got them. You got it loaded up. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's not you watch you watch as a fan and obviously you watch a little bit just because it impacts your job um, per se. Uh, but really, it's more about just controlling what we're able to do. Uh, and, you know, we have a target on our back now, uh, even after our struggles in the beginning of the season. Uh, going through those growing pains and finally catching stride and winning some games. We're just trying to continue to uh, strive for greatness, keep going, building on yep. what we have. We got a tough opponent, the Colts, and we just got to go in a hostile environment and get another dub. Hey, they're a team that started out 0-3, just like you guys started out 2-4. and And it was interesting to hear Christian Barmore latch on to the 2-4 and four mentality. He was talking about that today, which is something you've been talking about since 3-4, and four, to maintain that element of, look, we haven't done anything yet. Are the Colts playing in a similar fashion? They started 0-3. They've won five of their last seven. Yeah, they've had a playoff mindset every game. I think in even the last two, even the two games they did lose, they were winning in those games against the Titans and Tampa Bay. So, you know, they're a very tough opponent. Um, they've had some things not go their way and have some things go their way, but they have a great O line, a great uh, offensive running back, mm -hmm. and Jay Taylor. He's playing unbelievable. Uh, Wentz is playing good ball, and you can't sleep on their skill guys. They they can do it all. Uh, you got Pittman, you got Doyle, uh, Pascal, Pascal. He get, he's good. Ty, he still got mm -hmm. it. So really, really good on offense, and then their defense uh, with Buckner up front. Oh my goodness, he's that a guy beast. Is good. He is, <laughs> and and, and Darius about Darius. Yeah, they're they're just a really good team, top to bottom. Got a lot of pieces. With Michael Pittman, I mean, this is a guy who many people might not be up on right now because it's his second year in the league, a 40-catch guy last year. But he is at 6'4", 225, 230. He's a different kind of receiver. He's a lot to deal with. And he's got 67 catches, which is more than twice what any other wide receiver has on their team. Really a centerpiece for Wentz right now, huh? Yeah, the really good pickup by their front office. He's a really good player out of USC. Uh, he can do it all, too. Like, let's not sleep on his ability to take the roof off the top. He is fast for how big he is. Uh, but he does love contact. He is not afraid to initiate it. He's not afraid to go into the middle of the defense, into the teeth, and go up and get a ball. He's really, really good. Um, sky's the limit for the kid. We got to do our best to have all 11 guys pay attention to him and do our best. Uh, he's really good, and Wentz is finding him, and mm -hmm. they're doing their thing right now. They got good chemistry. Hey, with Taylor, now I, I'm lucky enough to have one of those end-of-the-season votes among the AP voters where MVP and all that stuff. Oh, you do? I do. Make sure you, you give me a vote. I do. <laughs> See what we can do. You've had a good year. You have had a good year. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. But with Jonathan Taylor, when we get to MVP, I just can't wrap my brain around ever giving an MVP to anybody who's not a quarterback. Because quarterbacks do so much every snap, 700 snaps a year. Even if you carry the ball 300 times, as Jonathan Taylor will probably do, you can never match the decision-making that has to happen at quarterback. So, two things. Jonathan Taylor, is he the best back you face this year? And two, am I a dink? 
I don't want to discredit any of the running backs we face, but he is very, very yeah. good. Um, I also think too, you got to put Derrick Henry up there. No like he's, You're right. he's really good. And it's crazy that he slept on, even though he had 2000 yards rushing last year, but JT he's balling. He deserves his credit. His O lines playing really well. Uh, JT's really, really fast. He and is. that that's what one thing I would say people underestimate him on is his speed. Obviously he's big and can run you over juke you really good balance, but his speed is killer. He's really, really good in the open field. Hey, I wanted to ask you about um, the tragedy over the weekend with Demarius Thomas passing away. Um, he was here for a brief time. You only know him as I did as a, as a media member from afar with Denver. And then you get a chance to meet someone and you spend some time with them at their locker. And they're just not exactly what you thought. And I'm only seeing a tiny glimpse. What was he like as a teammate and, and just some of your thoughts on, you know, what a tragic loss that is? Yeah, that one hurt. Um, I got to shed my tears and, you know, uh, he's an unbelievable person. Love him. He was like big bro to me instantly. Uh, spent some time in the offseason rehab when he did. So I got a chance to get close with him. He was rehabbing his Achilles coming off of that serious injury. And just talking to him as a person and as a human, he's always had a smile, always positive, always humble, always willing to teach. And I'll carry that with me all the time. I feel like I've taken that role on too, to always kind of be like DT in that regards of trying to bring somebody with you. And he was the ultimate team guy and just a good human. Um, he's going to be missed. I really miss him. I love DT forever and always. Uh, he was really big bro, really good guy. Hey, I appreciate you taking time to, to give people insight into to who he was and how he was because he was only here for a minute, but he was a memorable yeah. guy. Good luck this weekend. Fly safe, play well. We'll see you next week. Let's go. Thanks, baby. All right, coming up after the break, we got the mega hot take. Is it Mac Jones related? I'm guessing it might be. Meg, is it, Mac, is it, is it Mac related? No, it's not. Okay, false advertising. See you in a minute. But now for the mega dick. Guys, I've already argued that Matthew Judon is the best free agent Bill picked up in 2021, and he might be the most talented and consistent player in the Patriots locker room since Brady took his talents down south in 2020. But Defensive Player of the Year, he shall not be. Hey. In this oddly level year of the NFL, there are just spoils of transcendent defensive players. Miles Garrett, TJ Watt, Trayvon Diggs, and oh yeah, that pesky youngster Micah Parsons. Judon has 12 and a half sacks on the season, but some of those guys have three to four sacks in one game. It pains me to say it because he's been imposing and impressive, but Depoy, unlikely. Wait a minute. Do you know that I had to, I made a case for it last week? You knew this. I had to fire a shot back. I'm sorry. You know There's what? Just, I'm glad you did. There is so much talent on the defensive end of the ball. I don't care about, I don't care about Miles Garrett and I don't care about TJ Watt. Both those teams are going to end up on the outside looking in, but Micah Parsons, who was already going to be the defensive rookie of the year, it's gotten stupid. It's really gotten stupid. And it, he, he wasn't even the guy that I mentioned in my story. I mentioned Diggs first, but he's like a leopard on the savannah, isn't he? He's Just prowling. chasing down zebras. Prowling. Uh -huh. Taking him out at the watering hole. Time now for Quick Fire, presented by your local New England Honda dealers, featuring the all wheel drive pilot, because around here we Honda. We do. Let's hear from Josh McDaniels. He was talking a little bit about his young quarterback, Mac Jones, who only got to throw it three times before the bye. I have a lot of confidence in him. I watched every throw he made in pregame. I watched every throw in warmups. You know, I, I was aware of how his ball was traveling as well as Buffalo's. Like I said, we certainly could have thrown the ball more um, during the course of the game, but I think there was an element of you know, how is the game flowing and what's the best thing to do as the as the game is progressing. And so that's just the way it played out. Tom, that brings us to Scaredy Mac. Dolph McDaniels <laughs> protest too much. Yeah, I mean, we are now several days removed from this game having occurred. We're still talking about it. And the reason we are is because the Colts are already talking about playing way up on the line of scrimmage. Bobby Okariki has mentioned that they're going to make Mac throw over the top. We hit it on at the beginning of the show. 
So to me, this is a classic point where the Patriots are going to be 40 or more with the throws against the Indianapolis Colts. You just watch it. Take the over on the attempts. Yeah, especially based on, like you said, what Bobby told us, that they're going to try to take out the running game. Well, it's going to have to go to Mac. Bob. Now we know. I don't know. Maybe they'll reverse that. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Well, they'll have Carl Cheffer's crew yeah. working that with his zebras, and they are very flag happy. Come on, Carl. Come on, Carl. Put the flag away. They are the flag happiest crew in the National Football League this year. They are on pace for almost 240 flags thrown. They were the guys in charge of the Rams and the Cardinals last night. That was not a complete yellow out, but there was enough flags flying at crunch time to make me say, please, guys, we're not here to watch you on a Saturday night in December. So keep your eye on the flags, guys. I thought I think the presentation, though, when they come up and tell you exactly what it is, is true entertainment. Let's go to the plot thickens. Here's the AFC standings. Okay. And it's going to be really interesting for the Patriots heading out because the rest of their season runs through the AFC. Look at that. Look at that log GM. Look at that log GM. Look at all the teams the Patriots have uh, backed into a corner. All they have to do is take care of business against Indianapolis and Buffalo, which, you know, they ought to be able to do. And they're going to be in a position where they've beaten all the teams at the top that they had to deal with, Mego. You don't think that Buffalo is going to be coming up here, or I guess it's down here for them, coming back for blood after <laughs> that matchup. It'll be I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what Skull McDermott has to do. You want to do Urban Blight? Yeah, let's go to Urban Blight because, uh, look, this Jags, the Jags got to get this guy out of here. Him and Dan Snyder as owner of Washington, these two got to go. You just fired your own quick fire. 